You're listening to the most captivating podcast in iTunes. That's right, the Elite Man Podcast, where we turn average men into elite men every day. We interview the very best experts from the lifestyle, health, fitness, social, and even entrepreneurial worlds. And with their help, we give you some of the best advice on the planet. Subscribe now if you haven't already and enjoy the show. And oh yeah, if you really enjoy it, leave us a review. On today's episode, episode number 248, entitled, How to Bounce Back from Losing Over 100 Million and Getting Fired from One of the Biggest and Most Popular Companies in History, I chat with Noah Kagan. Noah Kagan is the founder of AppSumo, SumoMe, OKDork, and the former number 30 employee at Facebook. In today's episode, Noah talks about what it was like working alongside Mark Zuckerberg and being one of the first employees at Facebook when it just started to get big. He also talks about getting fired from Facebook, why it happened, what he wishes he did differently, and what he learned from this experience. Noah also covers the motivation he got from this experience, the many business successes he had afterwards, how he manages to stay so productive and focused, and what he ultimately wants to achieve in the next few years, both professionally and personally. We cover so much much in this fascinating, entertaining, and interesting chat. And if you're wondering how to get yourself back on your feet after a major blow in life and turn things around like never before, check this episode out now. If you would like to get more of our incredible world-class vitamins, minerals, herbs, and natural compounds, go to EliteLifeNutrition.com and order today. That's right. We recently updated the website so you can order directly from the website as opposed to just having to go to Amazon. You can still go to Amazon if you want to, but you can get even better discounts, deals, and offers directly from EliteLifeNutrition.com. If you order, say, two of the same item, you get 5% off. If you order four of the same item, you get 10% off. If you order, say, 12 or more of the same item you get 15% off and that is across the board on all our supplements and we also have incredible bundle deals where we've stacked a few of our products together so you can get the essential products that you need to be at your very best and save even more money by getting it through a bundle and if you order say $75 or more you do get free shipping on all orders so that is another way to save money and get even more of our incredible products so make sure you go right now to EliteLifeNutrition.com I'm telling you you're going to love the new look of the website. You're going to love how it looks. You're going to love how it runs. And most importantly, you're going to love all the money you save by ordering directly through the website so you can get all the products you love and feel at your very best. EliteLifeNutrition.com. All right, guys, we're live. It's Justin Stenstrom from EliteManMagazine.com. And my guest today is Noah Kagan from Sumo Me, App Sumo, Facebook, all kinds of stuff. Noah, what's going on, man? What up, Doc? <laughs> yeah dude we were chatting a couple minutes ago before we went live really cool dude you have a boston red sox hat on too which i thought you were from boston like me but it turns out uh your girlfriend gave you that as a gift <laughs> you're getting a lot of hate for that huh that sounds that makes me sound pretty weak like your girlfriend gives you buys your clothes i'm like yo she's got good taste <laughs> dude it's a nice hat she pulled some like <laughs> girls are so smart she pulled some new uh, jujitsu stuff on me uh, a few days ago she's like you know your, your hair's looking long and so I'm, I'm mostly bald, but I'm trying to grow out my sides. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to do that like funny Jewish thing, you know, like those yeah. long curl things. Just as a, George as a, Costanza. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to be. A, but, but, but better looking. I mean, he's not yeah. a really good looking dude. Come on. They can't, <laughs> they can't see the face on audio. But so she says that and I'm learning. I'm 37. I'm finally learning. She's like, oh, your hair's looking long. And then in my, you know, can't man in my uh, caveman brain, I'm like, oh, she wants my hair cut. I'm like proud of myself. We got to <laughs> figure out what they really, what they really mean. <laughs> No, you got a really interesting background, man. Um, I, first, I want to dive into a couple things, but I do want to ask you first about your experience with Facebook. How many years ago was that? I know I don't want to, I know you're actually yeah, cool about sure. talking about it, which is why I'm bringing it up. But how many years ago was that? And if you don't mind, what was the reason why you got fired? Because there is a whole propulsion, I guess, like a, it, it fueled you, I think, to do so many great things thereafter. But what, what was yeah. that time like? Um, that time was awesome, man. Um, so that was, I was just looking at calendar right now. So that was, what is this now? 2005, 14 years ago. Oh shit. Wow. So I think what's interesting about that, there's many different interesting things about the aspect. Uh, one, everyone gets, should get fired or everyone should go through some hard stuff. I really think it's character building because it really is like, yo, this is a test. Yeah. And like, how do you want the story to play out? It's up to you to write the story. Um, so I think it's just a really good thing to, for everyone to get fired. Uh, another thing that's interesting is I think people, if they're running their own businesses or in health, or in relationships, Mark and that company have been doing well for over 15 years. 
And I think a lot of times myself and a lot of other business owners or people starting business are like, you want to get rich and I want to be successful. I'm like, well, how are you didn't do it for 15 years? So I think a lot of consistency uh, is almost as important in businesses. And people kind of forget that with some of these like Disney and Microsoft and these companies that have been around a long time. Uh, from my experience there, I think what I would, you know, it depends on who's listening, but I think what I took away from it was go work on things you're really interested in. So I would have gone and worked there for free because I was using the product. I was like checking out girls. I was like talking to my friends and I was just like, I love this product. I, and I wasn't planning to even get a job. I just applied because I was going to start my own business or work at Facebook and they ended up giving me the job somehow. And I was, I would have worked there even if they didn't like pay me anything. Uh, the second thing is that I think when you're working on, not I think, when you're working on businesses, it's pretty apparent when you're working on something successful. And I think a lot of people spend too long working on something where they're building it and building it and building it. And then they try to finally sell something and no one wants it versus like Facebook, like put a thing out in the weekend. People went crazy for it. And then it's like, oh, let's go work on this thing that's popular. Uh, and so I think there was a really interesting experience to like feel what it feels to be part of a you know, rocket ship or something that has product market fit. Yeah. So for people working on things like you kind of know when you're pulling on people like, oh my God, I want it versus pushing like, oh, can you please buy this? Please, please, please take it. So it was kind of, it was interesting to learn that. It was also interesting to, to be around all stars. Uh, I think if you work solo or if you haven't worked for or around like literally the best in the world or at least best in your geographical area, it's a game changer, man. Like I was, I was even talking about that today where I interviewed a, we're looking for someone to help run our finance team at Sumo. And I interviewed this guy who's a VP of finance at a big, you know, big popular tech company. And I told him, I said, oh, we're trying to grow our company 50% this year because he asked me. And most people would say, oh, that's great. He said, how much you want to grow? I said, 50%. That's what we're trying to go in 2020. His first thing to me says, well, why not 100%? <laughs> yeah. Right? And that's the attitude at Facebook, at Mint, a lot in Silicon Valley. It's why these companies get so big. Uh, because you're at these people that have high expectations and they have high standards and to be around that and learn from that and experience that was a, was a life changing moment. I, I mean, I was only there nine months. Like if I was there for nine years or uh, maybe there's some diminishing margin returns, but if I was there for a few years, I'm sure my skills would even be significantly better. Yeah. So it was, it was a fucking wild ride, man. And I, I was really bummed when, when I got let go, but it kind of, it is what it is. And it created new channels uh, for me to learn from. Yeah. How'd you get hooked up with, uh, with Facebook? Did you know Zuckerberg or did you no. have a friend who knew him? Oh, it's cause we're Jewish. You're doing Jewish jokes already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that uh, I see what you're doing, Justin. <laughs> Actually, I've had some, you want to hear some, I've had some fucking weird dreams of those, him and Dustin, who was a co-founder over the years. Really? My, my buddy Neville always jokes there that the dreams are them laughing at me and hanging up on the phone. <laughs> but I've had a dream where like I hung out with Mark and it was actually okay. Um, and then I had a dream a few months ago where I was like riding in a car with Dustin and I was like, this is fucking weird. Um, <laughs> but no, man, I was at Intel just like any other cubicle monkey. Um, I think the difference for me versus a lot of the other people was I was creating a lot of stuff on the side. So I wasn't like, oh, I'd like to get a job somewhere. I was like, well, I'm just creating things. You know, I created a discount book exchange. I created um, like a bunch of like a hot or not site. We created a Craigslist site. I just created a lot of things that I wanted. Uh, and I think that led me when I went to Facebook, they're like, oh, I just applied straight up on their jobs listing. And they're like, oh, you've actually done a lot of stuff that's relevant to us. And I was like, yeah, I have. And made it easier to get the job. Yeah. What do you think? Well, so you never met him? Never met Zuckerberg? No, I mean, I met him when I got the job, of course. Oh, okay. like the first day I got there, he fired my boss and he's like, welcome to Facebook. Nice. Did you like no, That him? was a weird experience. I was like, all right, that's kind of strange. <laughs> Did you like the dude like right away? Or was he just kind of like, is, is he as weird as he kind of seems when he was yes. like, test testifying in Congress and all that shit? Yes. Like, he seems like a weird dude. Obviously a genius, but very fucking strange. I think Mark is exceptionally gifted here. I worked at Microsoft uh, in college as an intern. I met Bill Gates and they both are very similar in terms of like, they're smarter than you and they're smarter than me. They're smarter than almost all of us. Like they can, I, I had a joke with one of the guys there. I was like, oh, we should hire more stupid people so that we can take care of all of our users because <laughs> they're all dumbasses. Yeah. And Mark said, uh, it wasn't actually Mark, but it was another guy there who was, was one of the high ups. It was like, we should actually hire even smarter people than regular, like super smart so that we can further understand what the stupid people are going to be doing and needing. Mm -hmm. And it was just like that level, like that was, I know it sounds trivial, but that's the level of they're thinking through all the combinations and things that like regular people don't even imagine. Um, so it was, yeah, it's a high caliber of people. You know, if you think about it, 
it's not a surprise that someone who's super socially awkward that wants to create a site to help meet other people or check them out without having to actually meet them. And I, I will say from early on at, at Facebook, um, Mark would like the things he was saying in 2005 was, was stuff that didn't come out until 2010. And he was already, he was already ahead of it. Wow. Right. So you got to think about that. Right. Yeah. Like now Amazon's big in 2002. No one really gave a shit. I'm like, Oh, I can buy a book and I buy one book a year. Now everyone buys. Mark was doing a similar thing with like, Hey, we're going to be taking over the whole internet. We're going to be the toll booth to the web and everyone's going to be on it. We're going to have total domination, which is what he's ended up accomplishing. It's actually been interesting now. It feels like they're, they're weaker lately. Yeah. Um, and they're more vulnerable. Yeah. What do you think about that? Um, are they going to be around in a few years or do you think they're kind of, I mean, Instagram's still huge, which was, you know, major when he bought that, but do you think Facebook's still going to be crushing it in a few years? So if you look back from 1900 and I've thought about this, if you look back to 1900, like the year 1900, how many companies are still around from 1900? Not fucking many, dude. Not many, many. not many. Yeah. There's a few like, yeah, maybe you're a farmer and you're making nothing, but like in terms of sizable, significant companies, yeah, very, 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 very few, <clears throat> very few. I think it, I looked up the number, but it was like, I think sub 10 of the fortune hundred were wow. around or like some very insignificant number. Yeah. And so if you, if you macro and zoom out to the universe of the world, will they be around in a, in a thousand years? No. Um, I think Mark is still creative enough and forward thinking enough to, to evolve. I think what happens in business is that you don't lose from the obvious, right? You lose from the non-obvious. So Facebook won't lose, you know, MySpace didn't lose because like, I mean, MySpace is not a great example, but you lose from like TikTok, you know, coming out and just doing something kind of different. Or you lose from like some physical, like offline thing, or you lose for some virtual world thing. Yeah. Um, or you lose because some thing called WhatsApp is an easier way to chat with your friends and you can add things to it and then you buy that. Um, so I think it's the non-obvious things that could take Facebook out. It's interesting. I think, and then societies are, I mean, as much as people are fickle, yeah, we'll move to other stuff to communicate. Uh, I think there's fundamentals like me and you are going to always want to text or communicate in some way. How the medium happens might, might evolve over time though. Yeah, I could see that. And the cool thing is, well, the smart thing, I think that what they're doing is they're diversifying into so many different fields too, especially with like the messenger app and you know they have the facebook ads they also bought instagram they're getting it seems like to me they're getting into a lot of different places and kind of uh hedging their bets so if you know the facebook social media aspect of it doesn't go well in a couple of years they're still going to have so many other things same thing with like google too and amazon of course you know they bought whole foods and all yeah. the shit they're doing i mean they're fucking those three are really have taken over the world and i think facebook to me is the most precarious as much as it seems dominant um, really? I think if people find a new way to get entertained for, for 30 seconds at a time with good looking girls and, and yachts, they'll, they'll, yeah. they'll move to that. I feel like, <laughs> you know, uh, getting your stuff delivered in, in, in under an hour is pretty hard to replicate. And I think with Google, they have such a diversity of things that like are essential. Like for, for example, like if I had to give up Facebook, I would just text message and iMessage and I figure other ways to kind of communicate. But like without being able to search or without my email and certain things like that would be much harder for me to give up. Yeah. Like ask people next time you go out to dinner tonight or you see with friends, like ask what they want to give up. Like, would you rather give up Amazon or Facebook? Most people will be like, oh, I'd probably give up Facebook. Yeah, because there's so many other ones now too. Like, well, Inst- it, like even I'm Instagram not, I, in a way kind of hurt Facebook. I think definitely more time has gone to Instagram. I think yeah. what, what's interesting about Instagram is the habit that all of us have come to, like the toilet habit where you get on the shitter <laughs> and then you pull up Instagram and you're like, and you don't even know why you're on it. Yeah. So, you know, on, on Instagram, I literally, I only follow my girlfriend and a few friends. Mm-hmm. So I log in, there's nothing there and I log out. Yeah. Uh, and then on Facebook, I block the newsfeed. I think right now it's just more like we need to spend more time defending our attention and just being intentional with our attention. Yeah. So if you want to give it to something good, just, just be aware of what you're giving it to. 100% agree. Easier said than done though. It's way something. easier said. Dude, my girlfriend like, <laughs> she's like making love to me and then she's on Instagram. I'm like, get off the fucking thing. <laughs> You know what I mean? right. I'm like, yo, pay attention. Um, she's like, it's, it, this is so quick anyways. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I hate you, dude. It's, it's very addictive. Uh, all right. So you get fired by Facebook. What was the reason that they fired you? Did they ever really say? And how did you feel uh, at that point? Were you fucking pissed or were you like, all right, I'll just move on to all these other things I'm doing? I mean, I wasn't doing anything. That was, that was my whole life. Oh, I thought you had I mean, other I, things like going on in the background. No, I mean, I had my blog. No, so I gave that up when I got the job because oh, okay. you know, it was just side things. Uh, I was blogging. I've, all, I've been blogging since 2000. Wow. So I was always doing that. And I think that's probably one of the reasons that led me to get fired. I think number one, I got fired because I just wasn't that great. 
if, if I'm honest. Oh, really? wow. I don't think my skills were at the level that I think we're observing this in our own company at AppSumo.com and Sumo.com and all the different businesses that we that we're operating. Um, you need different types of skills as your company grows. Right. And so like your first physical trainer might not be the next physical trainer who can get you the next size. Sometimes it can. Um, but I think that's what I observed at Facebook is like my skills need to evolve and they, and, and my attitude and maturity that needed to, and they, and they didn't probably not until now. Yeah. Um, I also, I think my plan was always to run my own show. That was always my dream. Yeah. And you know, I was blogging and conferencing and doing all this stuff. And Mark came to me and was like, look, it's the Facebook show. It's not the Noah show. It's Mark and Facebook show. <laughs> And that's what it was. And so some people want that and they should do it. And some people want to be a part of it. Uh, and there's what, 40,000 people that want to be a part of it. Yeah. That's so it was, I, a good, it was a good learning over there. I was actually going to ask you about that too. Like, it seems to me like you are more of the, not solo entrepreneur, but you're the type of person who wants to run the show. You have, you know, be the boss, do your own thing. And it seems like that's more of like a corporate environment now, or at least it was starting to be back in the day when you left there. How, was it like more freeing? Was it more liberating to actually go out on your own? And if so, how did that, how much did that hurt you when you first got dropped by them? And then like, how, how long after that did you actually like realize like, this is probably a good thing for me? I, I still sometimes don't know if, I don't regret it. You know, when people ask what you regret, I never, that never comes to my mind. Yeah. Cause I'm not sure I could have changed at that time in my life. And maybe they didn't give me enough feedback or maybe, in, or I just didn't take enough responsibility to improve. But even at that time, like I was looking at my own journal uh, during those time periods and I remember being unhappy that I'm like, I can't believe there's 150 people working here. It's way too slow already for me. Really? Uh, Cause my strong suit is, you know, small businesses, marketing, starting companies, yeah. and then finding people that are better operators and, and can run with that. Um, and so I wasn't bitter, but I definitely think it gave me a great chip on my chip on my shoulder uh, to want to go and do things that I could say, fuck you, Facebook. Yeah, it definitely like gave me that edge. I think, you know, <laughs> I've heard it a few times where, it's, you know, anyone starting a business or trying to be successful, go get a chip on your shoulder. If you look at a lot of the most successful people, they've had some chips on their shoulder. So, you know, one of the most obvious ones is Steve Jobs was adopted. So, you know, he wanted to prove to his real parents, fuck you, like I'm significant, even though from his stories, like, you know, his adopted parents did a really great job. Yeah. Um, I think Bezos, you know, he was working out of finance and wanted to prove that he could do this company. A lot of people just have something to prove or like even Trump or Bill Gates had super rich dads and wanted to eclipse them. And, and so I'm not sure that's the only thing. Maybe I'm just making a too stupid pattern match, no, maybe. but I think it gave me a great kind of uh, fire to always look back and say, all right, I want to find something better than you guys. Fuck you. And I'll do it on my own. Cause I did feel, and I thought at the time, I don't want to get rich on Facebook just like I, I wouldn't mind getting rich don't get me wrong but i was like let me fucking earn it myself which is what we've been able to do we not just me we at, at, at you know appsumo.com what we've been able to do um but for at least six months i was sleeping on my friend's couch drinking a lot and you know i was pissed off and i was depressed i probably was depressed for years after it really? uh, wow. yeah man I was, dude i was with like it's like you were with like the hottest chick in the world and like everyone knows who you are and then it's not only that after they drop you, they're on all the TV shows and they're on all the magazines and they're on all the, yeah. sh like, uh, whatever else. It's, they're on everything. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the time when it was like, Facebook was opening up and exploding even more. And I was, you know, and I'm like watching it from the sidelines being like, oh, I was on that team. You know, and it, I think that, yeah, it really hurt my feelings for a long time. And then ultimately I was like, well, I can, you know, I have to do stuff that I can do for myself. Uh, so it, you know, it was a, it was a journey, man. I can't say it was easy. I think now, especially even like a day like today, I just, you know, today's not been a great day, even though, Oh, life is great. It is great, but there's ups and downs of, of this journey. How much did you leave on the table too? If you don't mind me asking, I know that I know it's out there. I forget the numbers. Yeah. Hundreds it's like a, probably about a hundred mil. Okay. So, I mean, that's got a fucking sting. And then, like you said, this was 14. How do you know you I don't have a hundred million now? I'm just saying it had to stay at the time. I hope I you do have 100 million. Million. 100 million. I hope I'm you do have 100 million. million. Well, you know what? You know what's funny too? You mentioned Steve Jobs and yeah. he got fucking canned by Apple way back in the day. He was a founder of it and then got canned by like the board of directors or whatever. And then he went off and did, I think, Pixar or something for a couple of years. But then he came back like maybe five or 10 years later or something and then got on top of the thing again. And then, you know, obviously till his death, he was running the show and blew it up mm -hmm. so that's kind of what i'm hoping for you something like that man 
a fucking maybe you know you don't take back, back and over. buy facebook yeah i mean i will back say and buy it when it switches combined i think mark's X doing some really interesting things with the whole oculus and buying different companies like the control labs one which is like monitoring braves monitoring the brain um i think i just at the end of the day i wanted to earn it myself and that was like a little bit more motivation to create it myself with with a team um would I go back and do it again? Yeah, I probably would go back and just try to figure if I could have matured. But I think I probably would have eventually quit or just try to wait a little bit longer. Yeah. And the thing with the money is, uh, there's a book that came out. I haven't read it, but I think there's this concept. It's like, what happens when you actually get all the money you think you want? Does it, seriously. And I know there's people out there who are like, fuck you, man, and give me some and I'll be good. Yeah. Uh, and then what happens when you're good, right? What happens when you get enough? And so I think the thing that I've always talked about and thought about, especially from that is like, well, am I living my life right now the way I want it to be? And if not, let's go figure that out. So the question I was asking this guy, this question on Tuesday or Wednesday, excuse me. I was like, yo, what's your dream week look like? He's like, well, I'd have to ask my wife. I'm like, dude, screw your wife. Let's just talk about what's your dream week. Like walk me Monday through Friday. And I think I'm almost 40. And as, as I'm getting to be closer to 40 and maybe I'll live to 150. I don't know how long. I'm like even being more crazy about like, I don't want to spend time doing bullshit. I don't want to hang out with shitty people. Even if they're just okay people, I don't do it. If it's work, that's just okay. I'm not doing it. And it's not that you have to have that much money. Um, I just think you have to prioritize yourself and think about what you really want and then focus on things like that. Yeah. And so I've become, yeah, even more obsessed with that, especially this year. And it definitely, I feel like this year has been one of my best years because of that. Yeah. I feel the same way, dude. Like just, the more I, the older I get, the more I realize how quick time goes. It's just like fucking, it speeds up almost as you get older, but it's also like you realize how important it is to spend your time wisely. And even if you want to like, or before you'd be more inclined to, to hang out with people who are like, you know, kind of cool or just, you know, okay. It's like, fuck that, man. I don't have time for that anymore. I'm just hanging out with people that really add to my life and just doing shit that I really want to do. The, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly like i was at a friend's dinner like a few what, two weeks ago i was hanging out with my buddies and then like i was just like i'm done and i just was like hey i'm leaving and i just left and yeah. then you know a few people lately have hit me up to be like hey let's hang out and normally i'd be like oh fuck i feel guilty and, uh, and i'm just like no i don't want to i don't owe you anything <laughs> the only person i owe is my mom and dad if you want to get more content more information and extra bonuses i don't post anywhere else make sure you follow me on instagram right now it's at justin stenstrom that's j-u-s-t-i-n-s-t-e-n-s-t-r-o-m i'm posting pretty much every day throughout the week most days out of the week for sure but almost every day and it's all kinds of information regarding health wealth business life dating relationships confidence and so much more i'm telling you you're going to love seeing some of the stories i post about and and the feed posts I post all the time. It's pretty interesting. It's pretty fun. I'm loving Instagram right now. So make sure you follow me. Instagram.com slash Justin Stenstrom. Or just jump on your phone right now. Pull up the Instagram app. And it's at Justin Stenstrom. So what are some of the things that you've done and, and that you did afterwards? Leaving Facebook, getting yourself back on your feet. You obviously started multiple successful companies. What are some of the things that you did to to make those successful like what are some of the strategy you used did you take anything from facebook any of the philosophies that they have to building that up and kind of building your own team out and the the structure and the foundation of it is it anything related to the what they did at facebook or is it just completely your own and you just kind of right. threw shit against the wall and see kind of how it stuck over the years like are you are you what, what ethnicity are you what is it what ethnicity are you or like what's your parents? Oh, uh, my father is Irish mostly and uh, Swedish, which my last name is, any Strum is usually a Swedish name. And then my mother's from South America. She's Peruvian. So I was thinking about an abuela. And like, I thought maybe you're a little, you got a little Spanish. Your abuela, like when she's cooking up something, that's your grandma. <laughs> she like throws a little spice in here and you're like, yo, what recipe are you using? She's like, yeah. I just know it over a lifetime. <laughs> right? You know that's exactly saying? how she sounds. That's how she sounds. <laughs> and so... I think we all like to think we're, we're self-made, which we're mostly team made and it's more life made. Right. So I think I've taken, I took a lot, man. I wish I would have been another year at Facebook, even if I didn't get paid any yeah. of the money just to learn everything so that I could keep using more of the, like literally the, the best in the world knowledge. Like the guy who created Napster was there, like the people that are insane. Um, so I think I l learned a lot specifically. I know for me, when I hear people talk, I'm like, just give me action items, give me fucking meat. Yeah. Um, I think at Facebook, I learned how to, what is, what is good product, like web product, like what is high quality, these people. And it drove me fucking nuts. They'd argue for hours about a font. Wow. And I'm like, yo, I don't care. Just, is there a word? And, but honestly, these guys are better than me. And so yeah. I think 
paying attention and learning about how to make a good web product. I think Mark was exceptional at focus. So he would be saying like, Hey, this is the goal. This is all we're doing. We have one goal, this, and now it's soon. And then I would be like, well, what about this Mark? Look, Cause he wanted to grow. And I was like, what about making money and being a real business? He's like, does it help us grow? I'm like, no, but it makes us profitable. He's like grow. And obviously he said in his weird voice, it is growing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he was like very focused on a singular goal. And so I've really used that around our businesses, which is each business unit. It's like AppSumo, what is our goal on AppSumo? What's the goal? And making sure that everyone in the team knows that goal, making sure everyone's bought into the goal. It's a real goal, not some bullshit. Like let's help a million people. But it's like, I don't really care. Be genuine goals that you want. So I think Mark really got me on that. Um, I think that, you know, of anything is probably the best. And also just, you know, how to build, a, I think, strong web products. I don't think I'm great, but I'm good. Um, one of the things I really get out of that, I think that that's probably one of the biggest things is just like having a singular goal and staying focused around it. Yeah. Uh, and then kind of ignoring almost everything else. How often are you switching up goals? And by the way, how did they end up determining like the font? Was there like a lot of <laughs> split testing, A-B testing on like, I, I don't know. How do you actually, dude, you know, it's funny because they eventually got good at it. And I feel like I was a little bit ahead of my time where I encouraged them to do some of that stuff. And you have to realize like now people know this in 2005, people weren't talking about A-B testing. Yeah. Only PayPal and like Max Levchin and those guys who kind of invented it um, and some internet marketers. But no, that was just like, it was kind of a negotiation. And then ultimately Mark would just be a dictator and say what's going to happen. <laughs> he had strong opinions. It was, it was nice actually. I think people enjoy having someone tell them what to do. Yeah. Uh, sure. And observe things that you didn't observe that would be wrong. And he was right most of the time. But yeah, I mean, I think I learned, I've learned different things from each of the different companies um, that I've taken away from. Like at Facebook, it was focus at mint.com. Uh, it was like how to organize marketing activities. So how do you, structure your marketing to be as effective as possible for whatever you're doing. And a lot of that, I use spreadsheets for my marketing, which I guess it seems sometimes I think other people do and sometimes they don't, but it's like planning out your marketing by month and by targets and then working through that. Um, but yeah, every company I've, I've kind of taken a little bit of uh, seasoning from. Yeah. So as far as the goals go, how often are you like oh, coming changing. up with goals and then changing them? Yeah. So I will say for small businesses, I'll tell you, I'll just say it for ours and I'll, but I think for the listener, it matters more to them. Uh, in my personal life, I do a bucket list at the beginning of every year. So I already have my 2020 bucket list, a rough draft ready, just of everything I'm thinking I'll do in 2020. And then in December, I bring that all together. Nice. And then, uh, so for 2019, at the beginning of the year, I have a list of things I'm doing for work, working out personal and vacations. So here, I'll pull it up. I can tell you a few. I don't know if it's interesting for others. Um, so for our company goals, sorry. I'm on a new computer. So, I'm trying to... so on my company goals, it was like a certain revenue for AppSumo. I wanted to get a new office, which we did. I wanted our new product, sendfox.com, which is email marketing for content creators, AKA you. You should go get it. It's only 50 bucks for life. What is it uh, called? So sendfox.com. Check it out. So it's, it's literally email marketing for content creators. And I'm tired. I was tired of paying monthly fees. Um, so yeah, here's my 2019 goals. So weekly content creation. So I do have my podcast, No Kagan Presents. So I do, really, this is my goals, which is like, do one of those episodes a week. I wanted one of our new products to generate a million bucks for customers. I wanted SendFox to get a thousand customers. I wanted AppSumo to hit uh, a certain revenue target. And I wanted one new Sumo office and working out. You want to keep going or I'll just, just do one. No, it's cool. This is interesting. Yeah. Uh, in my workout section, I wanted one l sparring match, which I've done. I want to buy <laughs> 3000 miles. I mean, I think maybe my boxing match, I'm a little being a bitch on. Yeah, uh, but it's a lot. Uh, and I want to work out three times a week. Uh, personal section, road trip with a good friend and my brother, build a sword, ch two charity bike rides, and then start an Austin house. And I wanted to visit uh, Vietnam, Portugal, and the Grand Canyon. And then That's the last sick. thing I do is uh, I have a word of the year. So my word of the year is power. <laughs> what the hell and is then that? I put these word of the year? <laughs> you have to have a, th a, a theme, like a motto, a dog. Okay. Power. Actually, next year, I'm really excited about the word. It's congruency. I'm yeah. like super stoked on that one. <laughs> uh, and so it's like, and so you were asking a few other questions, like how often do I change? I would say I generally don't change them, but I might make a change mid-year. Uh, so with my personal goal list, I wanted to originally in my personal section, make an EDM song. And then in April, I was like, fuck, I really don't give a shit about an EDM song. Like I have no motivation. I'm not desiring it. So I changed it to building a sword. Um, with our company one, uh, 
originally like SendFox, it was a certain amount of customers and it was like, that doesn't make any sense. So we changed it to the thousand. Um, I had one, and I think the biggest, one of the biggest things for uh, goal setting that I found, there's a few key things, but it needs to be objective. Like one of my things for work was enjoy my work. And I was like, well, how do I know if I'm doing that or not? <laughs> so I think it needs to be objective. It needs to have a time frame, And generally my goals are in, in a year time frame. Uh, and I, I think one thing that I observed recently that was really interesting is you have to have a goal that's a challenge. So we had this goal to make a million dollars for our customers with this new product that we're launching. And we made the million dollars a month ago. And everyone was happy, but no one really gave a shit. And everyone was like, oh, that's cool. I'm like, all right, you know, let's go get a burrito. And it's interesting though, because I've had other goals where I like this, I'm biking 3,000 miles this year. I'm at 2,600 miles. And I'll tell you, I'm working my ass off. This is like my second job to get these miles. Uh -huh. And I, when I get my 3,000, I'm going to be damn proud. <clears throat> yeah. But it's because it's hard. And so I think the goal has to be time-based, objective, and a bit harder. It can't just be you're going to do it anyways. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so there's goals in each of the companies, goals for myself. And then I, I look at these goals every single day. So I have a to-do app. I use Strides app. So I'll show you. I have a thing called Strides app where... Let's see, like I have a thing called read my goals and power. Okay. Yeah. And every day I get a notification saying, go do it. And then I go do it and I get a, get a little check mark. That's I live cool. for the check marks dog. Yeah, me too. I live <laughs> so for the check marks. <laughs> so you put all your goals for the year into this app and then you're looking at it every single day to make sure you're kind of ticking away at them. I look at my goals every single day. So I have my goals for 2020 already started. So just for anyone who's trying to figure out how to do their, their company and individual and personal and travel goals. So for 2020, I have a file that's like, just a lot of ideas. So like, let me start and I'll just pull up the idea. So I have like the word of the year, congruency. I have some places I want to go. I want to try to do Oktoberfest. And my yeah. girlfriend wants to go to Grand Canyon and we, I want to maybe do a million pushups. Um, <laughs> and then I have some business goals and stuff like that. So anyways, then I take that at the end of the year and I lock it in. I'm like, all right, this is what I want to do. Then what I do is I put that, that thing everywhere. I have put it on my phone. I put it on my stickies. I put it on a notepad, put it on Evernote. I want to see that as many times as possible. And so I make it a to do to see it every single day. I read it every single day. And then each week I'm kind of making sure I'm chipping away or scheduling towards those goals. Uh, cause I think generally it's like, then I don't hope that they happen. I make sure they happen. Yeah. Uh, and then mid year, give or take mid year. And I think it's really helpful. Honestly, most helpful is to have someone you send the goals to that checks in on you mid year. And that will not be a little, it will be honestly be kind of a dick to you about it be like, yo, how are you doing? Um, I have someone I check in every week with, you know, my buddy, Adam, uh, from my body tutor.com. It's a quick plug. If you want health coaching, um, he's awesome. He's got a New York accent similar to yours. What's up, what's up? Uh, anyway, so I check in with him every week and you're kind of keeping each other accountable. And so like when I drop the EDM thing or change the business ones, you know, I'm updating that. And then at the end of the year, I do a review with him of my goals. That's cool. Dude. And that's kind of how we do it with the business. Like each business unit, AppSumo being our main business. They have a goal for the revenue for the year. They plan it out every month. And then every week on, what is it? For, I think it's Fridays at 11 or Fridays at 2 p.m. I meet with Eamon, the guy who runs the show. And we just check in on the goal and how, is it a green light or is it a red light? And then if it's red, we talk about fixing. If it's green, we just talk about good times. We talk about the UFC. <laughs> how, um, I, I heard, I think on a different interview that you try to focus on like one major thing for your business. Like for AppSumo one year, it was say getting a uh, hundred thousand new subscribers or something or 50 new 50,000 in the next year it was like 500 K. But then you switch to like, you know, revenue base to, to expand in your reach. So, so it's like different focuses for like every year. Or I also heard too, that you said that you were focusing on podcasting one year and then it was like YouTube and then it was like yeah, something else. Good. So Interesting. how, how much, how important is it to focus on one thing as opposed to kind of focusing on a few different things and maybe spreading yourself too thin? So I think everyone, you know, it's funny. It's like, if you ever ask someone if they're a minimalist, everyone says they're really minimal. They're like, Oh yeah, I'm a minimalist. I'm like, and then I go to their apartment or house. I'm like, Oh, you're dirty and you're not that minimalist. <laughs> and I think everyone would like to think they're focused, but in reality, if you go and look at your week, like literally no one will do it. But if you look at how you spend your time each week, how much of that time is towards your goal? So right now our goal in our business is launching this. When is this episode coming out? Uh, about a month. So, okay, perfect. I can mention yeah. it. So we're launching this product called meetfam.com. It's automatic email marketing for Shopify stores. So it hundred percent does their email marketing without any humans. Like we created software that automatically does all email marketing for Shopify stores. 
So the majority of my week, 80%, if you look at my calendar, is around the launch on October 16th. So the majority, I don't, we scheduled this a while ago, but almost every single meeting is like, how is this affecting? Like, I just had a meeting before you, I have a meeting right after this, like that's all towards the launch. So I think in terms of focus, it's how much of your week is actually towards your goals. And I think most people would find out it's actually the opposite. Now, the second thing is that each year your goals change, right? Like you maybe want to get married next year. Maybe you want a dog. So I would say the thing I've done well is pick singular goals I wanted and got them accomplished. I think what I've done incorrectly that I'm working on is I think your goals need to be um, chain linked from year to year. I think that's where I've made some mistakes. So one of your examples was my podcast. So the No Kicking Presents podcast, I launched it. it. It did relatively well. And then it burned me out because I was doing a lot of it. And then so the second year, I basically put out like four episodes and the show kind of tanked. And so towards the end of the second year, I was like, well, I really liked the show, but what was missing? And because the first year's goal was 100,000 downloads a show. And at the end of the first year, I was at 30,000. And I was like, this is a failure. Fuck it. <laughs> right. Which, you know, 30,000 downloads a show is a pretty strong show. Oh, yeah. Very. Yeah. Um, but to me, I was like, oh, it's not 100. So it's, it's a waste. Instead of what I should have done is, all right, let's try to get to 50,000 next year. And what can I do to make sure that's easier for me to accomplish? And I would have more likely got it. So that was probably just a goal shift. And then the other part is that, you know, instead of burning myself out, I could have figured out how to reduce it to make it enjoy still enjoyable. Like, I think that's one thing in learning and goal setting. It's like, may, figure out how to make it fun for yourself. So my goal shifted this year, instead of focusing on something uncontrollable like downloads, I just said, all right, just do one show a week. That's it. Don't even, I don't look at my stats. Like sometimes I'm accidentally seeing it, like probably every other month I accidentally, it's like seeing a, like a Playboy magazine. I'm like, oh shit, I can't believe a titty. <laughs> uh, you know, but I don't look at my, I don't look at my stats and I really focus, what's my goal? So I have to remind myself when we're doing the show, I'm like, just put out one episode this week. That's it. Don't even worry about anything else. Um, and I think the show has grown. I'm not really sure. But I, what I would say is like, I think the goals are better if it's like something that you can keep doing year to year that is continuous. And I think I've made mistakes with that. Uh, and I'm looking to keep working on that in our business and in myself. Cool. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, last thing before we kind of wrap up in a second, how you important know? still is email marketing in 2019, 2020? I know you're a big email marketing guy, but you hear a lot of people talking about how it's dying and you know, how there's so many other ways to communicate with your customers now. And a lot of people aren't opening, you know, emails like they used to. Uh, I mean, are you email? Let's just talk about you for a second. Are you, do you email your audience? Yeah. How often do you email your audience? Once or actually once a week now we we're doing twice for a little while, but now it's back to once a week. Then why do you email them? To stay in contact with them when I release new content mostly, and then just give them any updates if there's some important shit coming up. Okay. I mean, is that, how is that rank in terms of your channel of communication with your customers? For me personally, it's one of the most important things. Which one's more important? Honestly, probably just the podcast itself, like talking to people, reaching them through that. And then a lot of people email me uh, about episodes and then we have a Facebook group too, which is pretty big. So that's probably the biggest ways. Those, those are the, those are three big ones. Those are three big ones. I don't know if one's more than the other, but they're all pretty important. Yeah. I think email is not um, I think that what you want to do is control your destiny. And if you have something you want to tell your audience, like if you put out a podcast, I have to go to the show and listen to it and find out email is the most scalable way of marketing your product. Facebook, you have no control. Guess what? They want to change your page. They want to like change your group. They want to do, you have no control over it. Uh, email is, you know, Gmail can fuck with you a little bit, but for the most part, it's the most scalable way to grow a business that I've ever seen. Uh, the other thing that's crazy about it is that the cost is so insignificant generally relative to how much you can make from email. Yeah. Uh, so for what I've observed is like, like Shopify stuff, like number one way Shopify stores make money is advertising. Number two is influencers and word of mouth. And number three is email marketing. So that's why we built the meet fam thing. Um, I, I don't know. I guess I've just, I built my whole, I've become a millionaire off of email. <laughs> uh, real talk. It's not, not bragging. And I don't mean it to sound just to give you an idea. Like, we make all of our money off email. And the reason we've done that is because it's the easiest way to communicate with people without worrying about Google or Facebook or Twitter changing some algorithm on us. Yeah. You know, how many people, I always see these people in these groups, these Facebook groups that I'm in, they're like, oh, my SEO, Google changed an algorithm. I'm like, well, did you protect yourself at all? Did you wear a condom? <laughs> and email to me, for most businesses, is the best way to scale and, and be able to hedge against you know, anyone kicking you out of their business. 
yeah or altering your business it's the online condom like there's nothing that can ever really (laughs) shut you down you know there is some like you might go to spam or gmail might uh, mess with you but that's pretty resolvable um i've just been able to find it as such a great way to like talk to an audience and promote different things and promote different people and and grow our businesses and enabling other people to do that uh, is what where we've actually made a lot of our our money is enabling other people to grow like sendfox.com is growing really well Cause it's like, yo, instead of paying monthly for your email marketing, just which I got sick of is pay 50 bucks once for life. And you can do email marketing as long as, you know, as long as you're a content creator uh, for the rest of your life. And it's like, Oh really? That's awesome. That sounds uh, it, like ridiculously awesome. Yeah. I'm just, What's I got the catch. <laughs> no, no. The catch is that all these other people are ripping you off. Really? Yeah. Yeah. They're just ripping people off. And that's why, you know, <laughs> sometimes I think about like, I like a deal. And I'm like, oh yeah, I guess that's why I run AppSumo or I help with, started AppSumo because I like deals. Um, and so it's trying to create that in other verticals where I think people are just overcharging. So we did that with SendFox on content creators instead of MailChimp or ConvertKit or AWeber. Uh, and then we're doing it for Shopify with MeetFam uh, so people can have emails without having to pay a lot of money. Nice. That's awesome, man. I might have to actually take you up on both of those because uh, we got you a, shop a Shopify for, store? Yeah, I have got one now. I Which just store? Uh, it's EliteLifeNutrition.com. We just switched over like uh, two months ago to Shopify. Why'd you switch over? A lot of people are well, switching over. Well, by we switch over, I mean we, um, we're just based on Amazon before selling products. And now we actually have our own store so we can buy directly from the site. Do you have a full-time email marketer? No. How often are you sending emails? Emails for the, sh- for the Elite Life people? Yeah. Like once a week, if that. That's a lot less actually than Elite Man stuff. See, that's the thing that I, mean, I know that's why we've kind of, cre- honestly, we create a lot of these for ourselves, <laughs> you know? So, cause the problem, you know, at AppSumo, we have a team of three people full time that do our email marketing and in, you, we working with, we're working with all these Shopify stores and they're like, yeah, I don't have anyone. Yeah. And so we can't just give them our team cause we don't have a team. So it's like, well, what if we created the software that replicated what that team does? Um, and that's so for cool. elite life nutrition, if you go to meet, you could do, do it today. If you go do it today, it'll work. Go to meetfam.com, log in. It'll automatically create your welcome email, Instagram emails, promo emails, and product emails, and it'll give you a calendar for the whole month and you're done in probably about two minutes. That's sick. I'm going to check that out in a sec. And then the SendFox one is one I want because I, I, I create content. I was just tired of figuring out how do I write an email? How do I get pull in my content? Just like make sending emails of my content and building my audience easier for me. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Dude, you're doing so many awesome things and you've done incredible things since the Facebook days. No, dude. (laughs) You're doing you're doing incredible things, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, just sharing your wisdom with us today, man, is really an honor and a pleasure. What is the last send off takeaway message you'd like to leave the elite man audience and then a place our listeners can check out your latest stuff? Dude, you know what's funny? I was trying to think about what's an elite man. I'm sure do you talk about that a lot? Not often, no. What does that mean to you? To me, it just means being the best man that you can be. It's not really a comparison thing like you're better than other people or better than other men. It's just really being the best man that you can be. I guess some people kind of see it as like, you know, being an elite performer, which is kind of cool too, but it's not really based on that. Yeah, I think that's what I was wondering. Like today I was, I was driving to the office or I was on my scooter and I was going to the office <laughs> and I was really jealous of everyone. I was like, look at that guy who owns a building and that person owns a house and these people all own all these things. and during lunch today with our, I was with our team and I was like having lunch and I was reflecting on, it. I was like, well, why am I so jealous? And it's like, well, it's just cause I'm not happy with some of the things going on in our business. And it's a, it's a ultimately resolution of just five, literally. And I wrote it down for myself. I was like, just figure out what you really want. Cause if you want to go get a house and you'll go get it, but figure out what, spend all the time thinking about what is it you really want. And once it's, that goal is clear, then that's all you have to go do. And I think there was a lack of that going on, which led me to some of that jealousy. And so coming back, I reflected on it. I was like, oh, I just want some of the stuff in the business to be in a different way. And let's go make that happen. And so, yeah, I think the advice for everyone out there is that. Just spend some time in a float tank naked, uh, <laughs> boxing, playing pickleball, levitating. <laughs> I don't like showering, but if you like showering, go shower, walk around, and make those lists of the bucket list of what you really want. And look at that shit every single day. And at the end of the year, you think about how fucking cool it is that you're going to accomplish this stuff. Yeah. It's awesome. you can, so, and a lot of the stuff I've done is it, I don't look at it as like I'm successful or not successful. I just look at, these are the things I've been really wanting to do. And I'm really fucking happy about it. I'm like, damn, I can't believe I'm actually doing it. Um, like this weekend, I want to do a man day 
Instead of Saturday, we're doing man day. So we're going to go ATVing, shoot guns, and then barbecue and watch UFC. And, I'll, and I'm just like getting, I'm like, damn, it's so great to have that to look forward to. And I'm planning it. I'm like, we got a, a driver. It's like 200 bucks for the day for a driver. That's sick. And then I'm getting breakfast tacos. And then my buddy's <laughs> going to barbecue. And then I just, we're going to do a beer bongs of White Claw and like Coors Light. It's just stupid as shit. But I was just like, <laughs> you know, just do the things you really want. And uh, I was really want that. And so I'm like, I'm a little surprised how much energy I'm putting into it. Yeah. But I think that's how we should be spending the majority of our weeks. And so I hope everyone does that. If people want to check out me, I'd say number one, if you're starting a business or growing, go to appsumo.com, sign up for the newsletter. It's free. Um, for me, uh, if people listen to podcasts, no Kagan presents here, check out my show. Uh, it's mostly just me featuring different startups and how to grow a business. Uh, that's about it. All right. No, I really appreciate it, man. Tell me your last name. How it's, do you say it? Prop? Sten Strum. Jesus. Sten like strum and a guitar. Strum. Sten Strum. Yeah. Sten Strum. Yeah. Perfect. Sten Strum. You're good. All right, man. Thank you. I appreciate the time, doc. Yeah. Really appreciate it, man. Take care. I'll talk to you soon. All right, brother. If you are not on the Elite Man newsletter yet, make sure you get on it right now. Go to EliteManMagazine.com slash newsletter and sign yourself up today. Get all of our bonus podcast information, sneak peeks and upcoming shows, behind the scenes content, special offers and exclusive Elite Man updates found absolutely nowhere else. You are basically getting a sneak peek into all Elite Man content, activity and updates and news. You will be the first person notified when anything Elite Man related happens. I'm telling you, it's basically like getting a sneak peek into Elite Man headquarters. Go to EliteManMagazine.com slash newsletter, sign yourself up, and become a true member of the Elite Man community. I look forward to speaking to you soon. EliteManMagazine.com slash newsletter. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. But before you go, there's one last thing I'd like you to do, and that's this. Subscribe to our podcast right now if you haven't already. By subscribing to the podcast, you get every single episode the minute they're released. Get all of our Elite Man podcast episodes and all of our world-class advice absolutely free. Subscribe now if you haven't already and become an elite man today. And yes, if you do love the podcast, leave us an amazing review. We really do appreciate it.